Well, there it is. Hi guys, welcome to another Warcraft free reforged video. This time I'm going to be doing a reaction style commentary over some gameplay that has been found on the YouTube. Courtesy of Book of Flame, he's over here, uploaded uh, a video, Warcraft free reforged beta gameplay, human versus orc, 1080p, 60 max settings. So we're going to basically watch through this and I'm going to give some commentary and some feedback, criticism over what I'm seeing and go from there. So I've got Twitch chat with me and perhaps I'll refer to them from time to time, any thoughts they might have. Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure to thumbs up if you enjoy this content and we'll get started. Job's done. So this is human versus orc on Lost Temple. The human starting on the left hand side. This map is famous for the Tower Islands. You might recognize it. It's where you build a bunch of towers at the top left and try to bunker down and essentially um, destroy two enemy players by not actually attacking them, but strangely enough by defending. So he's starting off with the Mountain King hero from his altar. He is running around with his peasants. They look very busy, these guys, compared to the original peasants, I've got to say. Now that's a blacksmith. Obviously, more lumber is required. That is a very big human issue. Ah, but he did manage to get enough for the farm. He should have some footmen lined up from the barracks that's coming out. There it is. So first footman is out. It does look quite good, actually. It looks very slim and tall, though. I'm so used to my footman being smaller, chunkier. Mountain King is moving over to the east-hand side, running around. He does look a little bit odd, the Mountain King, when he runs. Just on first glance, the movement. The altar looks pretty. I like the trees, the foliage. The terrain's really starting to settle in now. And I think that's going to help us get a lot more use of these reforged models that we're looking at. When the terrain itself is far more um, within the lines of the same amount of detail that we're seeing from a lot of these characters. So you can see the Mountain King's lips moving when he talks. It's only a little bit though, so there's not too much work put into that. Bear in mind that obviously this is unfinished, not complete. So these are just criticisms of what I'm seeing. That's all I can do. Otherwise, like I said to someone that sort of like wasn't happy about me criticizing, should I just say everything looks good? Ah, oh, looks good. Rifleman looks good. Portrait looks good. Town Hall looks good. Those two peasants look good. You know, that, that's not going to be very fun commentary, is it? Or criticism. Ah, we're going into militia mode now. So he's going for the fast expansion. He's only taking a few militia with him. Oh, wow, those creeps look so weird and alien to me now because I'm so used to them looking far more cartoony. They look quite realistic. I mean, that's the thing with a lot of these models. They've got a lot more realism to them. So it's just a case of getting used to them. And hopefully they still retain that Warcraft vibe that we love from like Warcraft 1 to the more cartoony looks. Obviously, even Warcraft 3 itself is very cartoony, but... This, we're going to have to take a bit of getting used to. Look at the militia. I like the portrait character for the militia. He definitely looked a bit more desperate. Yeah, look. What? He's just like roped in to being fighting. Oh, look. The treasure chest. What is the item, though? So, I don't see an item drop at the moment. What I have seen in some custom games is you actually... Say, for example, boost of speed drops... It's not actually the... Oh, that's an arcane vault. It's not actually the tre treasure chest that's dropping. It's the actual boots of speed that are spinning around. The actual item itself, you can see it, a 3D model of it. And I would personally prefer that. So it was more visually obvious to the players, particularly new ones, what it is they're picking up rather than just a treasure chest. Because it feels very random, the treasure chest. Whereas if you actually have an item model for each item in the game new players old players we're all i think we're going to prefer that plus as a commentary point of view you can really pick up on it a lot quicker so the arcane vault is being worked on you can see the wooden structures outside and that peasant chopping away at it there's a circle of nobility so these models have been hdified the gloves of haste the circle of nobility they definitely look different in the inventory he's now engaging with the horde so this is one versus one, and it is essentially versus a computer, I believe, this gameplay. He's making riflemen. He's going to concentrate on continuing to make riflemen. He looks like he's done with his footmen after securing his expansion. And he's trying to dance around, working out what he's going to do versus the horde. 
moving on to another creek camp. The Mountain King feels very floaty, but at the same time, I can still see the effort in his legs moving. It just... I'm not sure how to... How to correct that, so to speak. Have you guys got any thoughts about how to necessarily correct that? We'll have to look and see. That ogre looks freaking massive, though, compared to the original ogre mauler. The ogre mauler is like, he's big, but he's not, like, super tall and muscular. He's just kind of fat and chunky. So, very serious looking. The tree stumps look quite gorgeous, settling into that beautiful green grass. He's picking up another circlet. <laughs> Only his mouth moves, really, in the Mountain King. Otherwise... Oh, no, his eyebrows just moved a little bit there. He just kind of went like that. You can see the experience popping up, so that still works. The riflemen look pretty good when they attack. I'm just watching the riflemen, the gun smoke coming off of the um, rifles themselves. He's upgrading the attack damage on his rifles. More circlets of nobility. Wow, very lucky. That's one of the best items you can get for that item drop range. Moving in with the footman. Losing the footman, but he doesn't care. Because he just wants more riflemen at this stage. The farms look very settled in. I like the look of the farms. So we're getting a chance to look at some of the buildings here. And hopefully get to see the horde buildings when we go to attack. Upgrade is completed. So that's working on more and more. He's got about almost 100 FPS, which... At least does give me a bit of hope because one of the things I did worry is that the new models are going to basically drag the FPS down. But we'll still have to see how that's going to play out. This isn't actually against players, so the FPS rate could drop quite dramatic, uh, dramatically. Claws of Attack. I didn't actually get to see the um, tome very well. Perhaps we'll get to see another one. I don't want to spend too much time pausing the gameplay, though. I want to keep this going. I like the icon for the building. That's more clear, I think. Although the other icon wasn't too bad. It was just basically a, a grey stone brick wall. Masonry upgrade, basically. Thank you, Johnny, for the upgrade. Uh, for the upgrade. <laughs> for the uh, <laughs> subscription right there. Now, the Knolls. These are actually some of my favourite models. But one of the things I am noticing a lot is all the models are, like, freaking massive compared to their originals. And I'm not sure if I like that quite as much. Even the small Knoll poachers that you can see, the littlest one, Still looks pretty freaking big. He's like basically the same size as what the assassin one would look like. And that's the one that has the envenomed spears. So, they almost seem a little bit too big and chunky. But perhaps you're okay with that. I'm just concerned about the amount of gameplay space and environment they're going to take up. Theoretically, it shouldn't be any different because it's the same engine. So... They should be using up the same amount of space. It just looks like they're a bit too busy. We have the Paladin moving in now. I like how he runs with the two-handed hammer. I need to see... Does the Paladin model that you get from Melee games have the book? Because I want to see... He's got his hand over something on the left-hand side. So he was just looking at the uh, Goblin uh, Mercenary. Not Mercenary, sorry. Laboratory. That's where you can pick up a Shredder... A Zeppelin, Goblin Sappers. He's found the Horde, moving over to the east-hand side. He wants to do a bigger creep camp. Ah, you can clearly see the hero levels as well. With that number four. So you've got the health bar, you've got the mana bar. Which, the mana bar was only really a recent addition in patches only, you know, so many months ago. And now we've got, like, the level that could be indicated. I don't know whether that all there'll be an option to turn that off or on. But I can't see it being too cumbersome or, you know, taking up too much screen space to be a problem for most players. Like, oh, I've got to get rid of that number four. You can clearly see the Paladins leveled up to number two there. So normally you get a little icon at the top left. Little number where your hero is. That Paladin picture is so strange, though. I guess you just got to kind of get used to it. He looks more like a kind of military unit than an actual sort of hero Paladin. The Mountain King portrait looks a bit more heroic, but still, kind of, you could imagine it being more of a unit, but it's just because they're different, so it's, it's the getting used to it part is difficult. He's moving over to the Goblin Mercenary. Why do I keep calling him Mercenary? Goblin Merchant. He's going to buy himself some stuff. So daytime is still very bright, which is what I like to see. The granite, that's the um, Rock Golem model. 
it hasn't dissipated correctly, but obviously, work in progress. I know this. You don't need to tell me. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. Looks like he's working on a Griffin Avery now, and the next stage of masonry. But I doubt the masonry is needed because the computer doesn't seem very aggressive right now. But then again, that's just nitpicking, isn't it, really? You can see the claws of attack looks more... Well, the other claws look like claws, but these have quite a nice model look to them. Very sharp and very uh, bloody at the tips. Keep is about to upgrade into castle. He wants to get himself a third hero. Which is it going to be? Picking up the crystal ball. Crystal ball looks pretty similar. All the models look similar. So the... the um, not the models. The um, item icons look very similar. Which is a good thing. Oh, look at the griffin and the dragon horse rider. It focuses on the animal rather than the rider themselves for the picture, which I don't mind. I think that's correct because you are essentially thinking griffin. Yes, it's a griffin rider, but it's more the griffin that you're focusing on. Yes, there's a rider upon the dragon hawk, but it's the dragon hawk that you're after. So that makes more sense for new players. It's going with the blood mage. A cool choice for the triple human hero if you start off with the mountain king. I typically do Paladin third, though. Okay, so we're moving into the Orc base. Definitely looking very small, a lot of the buildings. They're actually smaller than the um, old buildings, which is funny because so much of this actually almost seemed like it was too big at points. He's trying to secure us around. He's up against the Shadow Hunter, which it took me a moment there to work out what that hero was. There's just a bit too much clutter and armor going on. The Blade Master is a bit more obvious, to be honest. But even then, that armor might be a bit OTT. Judging from the point of view of an up, you know, pointing down. Isometric point of view. We've got Griffin Riders rolling in now. Let's see their Storm Hammers. Oh, yep, the Storm Hammers look good. Not sure if there's a little bit of a delay as to how they're landing. Uh, headhunters rolling up, trying to escape. Riflemen picking off the horde units with no trouble whatsoever. So the Griffin Avery looks really cool. And the building of the Griffin Avery, the glow coming out of it, I like that. You want to see that the building itself is working to produce a unit. This makes it obvious for you, this makes it obvious for your enemy, that that building is a threat. It could be producing something that could cause a big problem. So I'd love to see what the undead one looks like, actually, like the Boneyard huge glow so you know a frost worm is coming so you need to deal with that if you haven't got the appropriate army to deal with it we've got flame strike going down clear and concise not necessarily as flashy as the original flame strike but it gets the job done i feel and that consecrated ground makes it very obvious you should not be standing there shaman brought down that was a strange symbolization i guess that's not finished there was some kind of like health Icons coming off of the shaman as it fell. It didn't look like it was as gory as it could be. Normally, I feel like there's a bit more blood when the shaman gets shot down, but that could just be me. Oh, look at the icon pictures. Drain life. That looks very vicious, that does. So I imagine the... Uh, sorry, the siphon mana, but the drain life one is going to look very similar as well. Because it's basically the same icon. There's a wind rider. He's trying to micro his way out of this. He hasn't been spotted. The Tauren is down. Big boy Tauren. He looks very big. Very massive. Which he should do, I suppose. He, the Shadow Hunter is definitely too big. That weapon is well over the top. And there's too much armor, I think, going on in the shoulder pads. The original one is far more skinnier. And I just feel way more easier to identify. The Blood Mage definitely looks very skinny compared to the Chaos Fast one. I don't know if he could do with looking a bit flashier because he almost looks a little bit too skinny. He's definitely a hero. There's not much of a glow behind him or underneath him that I can identify him. I feel like the Paladin and the Mountain King stand out more as units, although the Mountain King is still very small. Which, yes, he's a dwarf, but it's got to be as big as possible so you know that's a dwarf, that's a hero. Right, we've got reinforced barricades, I suppose. Those got to be spiked barricades, or is that just how the Orc buildings look? I will be doing another video where I cover Orc versus human gameplay. So, if you want to see it from the other point of view, Book of Flames has created another video that I will be taking a look at. It's a little bit longer, and I'll put that on the channel shortly afterwards. And we can take a look from the Orcs' point of view, the sounds, the voices, the looks. 
That torrent. I like the animation, actually, and I'm swinging it. It's very fluid. That looks more finished, to be honest. That torrent chief... Uh, not torrent chief, the torrent with the um, totem pole. He was very fluid and smooth. Okay, Blade Master's mirror image. Is he debating? Or is that the original Blade Master that's just charged right into the front? I think that's the original one. No, I was wrong. The Storm Bolt sealed the deal on the one on the east end side. These Orc buildings do look pretty good, though. I like the sort of like the fiery furnace look that just surrounds them. Oh, look at the gyrocopter icon. See that? That's definitely a gnome, that is. See, I think the original Warcraft 3 gyrocopter is supposed to be a gnome, but they use like a dwarf model. It doesn't look that much like a gnome. It looks much more like a dwarf is riding it. But everyone's always been confused about that. But technically, it should be a gnome in the flying machine in the gyrocopter. I love the look of the raiders. I think they look good. I think they, they look reminiscent to their original counterparts. So you can see the initial middle part of the structure of the bestiary going up and going down. Like it's really working at it. It's very nice indeed. The ultra looks cool. We'll go over a lot of this in another video though. Because he's just finishing off the buildings. The mortar team. I'm going to concentrate on the human buildings for now. I like the icons. The pictures at the bottom, basically, when you selected multiple units. The riflemen really stood out there from the mortar teams. So I feel like you can differentiate the army units. If you look there right now, that's very clear that that's a mortar team. They just got like almost a distinct look to them. Despite both having grey beards, you know which one is which. So I don't have an issue with that. The Tauren totem actually looks very small in comparison to the original one. The original one's super chunky, but it doesn't have to be big. It's kind of strange how some of the buildings just look weirdly small, particularly the Orc ones, because, like I say, in the original Warcraft 3, the Orc buildings are like some of the biggest ones. They take up the most amount of space. They're very, very um, in your face. <laughs> look at the portraits sort of ginger beard guy at the back are we there it is there's avatar form now the mountain king's bigger i feel like if you basically stopped him halfway through that um avatar form you could basically just say that's the height the mountain king should be as normal and then his avatar form should be even bigger than it currently is right now feel free to comment and um let me know whether you agree with that or not but if you sort of like take that part where he's growing into the avatar and stop it halfway, that's the height I would like the Mountain King to be. Just needs to be a bit tall, a bit more intimidating, I think. The Paladin seems to work, though, quite well. With the giant two-handed hammer, you know that's a hero, basically. Wiping out the expansion now. Griffin Riders at work. We just haven't seen Dragonhawk Riders, but we've seen the majority of the units. Missing Knights as well. And that's the end of that. So that was a Book of Flames video. We'll stop it there. The UI just goes purely black, but obviously that's something that will be worked on over time because this is not even technically beta. This is basically uh, a hacked sort of beta, people getting themselves access. I haven't managed to do it so myself, but I will do perhaps at some point. I just prefer to get the original beta so I can do it officially, but We'll see what happens. For now, I'm happy doing sort of reaction videos and review videos. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to thumbs up. I'll do another video and that will come up on the channel shortly afterwards. And have a good day. Take care. Thank you very much. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you later.